Well, the biggest trend we see in defence offset at the moment is that the burden is getting a lot greater. Now, that's partly because of the way the world defence market is going. The spending growth is in emerging markets which are relatively ill-equipped to meet their own needs. That means they're reliant on external suppliers. They realise this is a buyer's market at the moment, so offset demands are getting greater and greater. Now, in terms of the offset policies that we see in the world, uh, the room for manoeuvre is reducing. Now, historically, there was a, a bit of a Wild West element to offset in the past. It was uh, ill-defined, often poorly codified, and that's changing. Since 2000, we've seen something like 25 countries in the world introduce formal offset programmes. So that means greater clarity for suppliers, uh, but also less room for manoeuvre. So we're seeing the range of acceptable programmes diminishing. We're seeing an increasingly long-term approach. Uh, the quick offset programmes of the past, which often had very limited long-term economic value, those are certainly a thing of the past. Well, we took quite a deep look at offset programs of the world, uh, how they've developed historically. We found that there's a surprisingly linear path of development. So as time and national wealth increases and as local technological sophistication increases, there's, there is a very straight path uh, to growth. So. Countries typically begin with relatively low-level requirements, uh, usually relating to maintenance and repair of land systems, uh, the production of, say, ammunition and small arms, and uh, programs at this stage are typically on an ad hoc basis. It's uh, obligations are accepted, opportunities are accepted uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Then we go through the path of sophistication, so there's the production of land systems, then there's the maintenance of aircraft. Then they move to the C4 technologies, the command and control, the sophisticated electronics. Then there's a shift up to program joint development and co-development. And the absolute final stage we see when the highest levels of sophistication are achieved, when the highest levels of national wealth are achieved, at that point a country is typically a net exporter. At that point, offset becomes unpopular. It's no longer a benefit. It's something you have to do in the world market. So at that stage, we tend to see opposition to offset. Well, offset is not going to go away. This remains a buyer's market. We see more exporters than ever before. Uh, chasing a relatively static market. So the buyer's market issue remains. And the big trend in defence spending that we see is the rebalancing of the world from what we'd call the North Atlantic concentration of the post-Cold War world, where defence spending was very much focused on North America and Western Europe, uh, countries that could typically meet the majority of their defence requirements. Now, if I could give you some figures, over the next decade, uh, we see non-NATO markets overtaking NATO markets in total spending around 2020, 2021. Uh, we see a decline in the West over the next decade of about 3% in real terms, so a relatively static market. Uh, looking beyond the West, we see 16% growth. And we calculate that over the decade to 2022, 2024, we're going to see offset obligations in the world of at least $100 billion. So this is an issue that is not going to go away.